Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be giving you an introduction to the GPIO package for Python that allows you to communicate with your GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi. So a Raspberry Pi essentially is a low-cost computer, so for anywhere between $10 to about $50, you can get your version of a Raspberry Pi. That Raspberry Pi will have a ARM CPU, it will have RAM, it'll have storage, it will probably have a wireless and a network stack on it. Basically, it's a full-fledged computer. But what makes this special, what makes this different than other low-cost computers that you may purchase is access to the GPIO pin. So those GPIO pins allow you to do things such as connect external sensors. So you can connect uh, distance sensors or motion sensors. You can connect temperature and humidity sensors. And you can also output on the pins to do things such as turn on LEDs or move things such as servo motors. So that's what makes the Raspberry Pi really special uh, compared to the other low-cost, uh, power-efficient computers out there is the access to the GPIO pins. Well, what will allow you to actually access and control those GPIO pins is the GPIO0 package within Python. And basically, with this package, what you're able to do is you're able to connect to the pins and it has all of the code so you can do things such as turn pins on, be able to read information from the pins, so on and so forth. And then once you have that information, you then have the full compute resources of your Raspberry Pi so you can store information directly into a MySQL database. You can write to a file. You can send out an email or an SMS text notification. So the GPIO pins really make the Raspberry Pi a really cool device. Think about all of that functionality you get out of an Arduino, being able to connect sensors and that types of things, but then add on the compute resources of an actual computer. And now in one single package, you can both be bringing in information from the outside world. You can be processing running scripts based off of that information and then having outputs be everything from an LED to an SMS notification to simply logging into a MySQL database. So today we're going to be talking about the GPIO0 library, kind of show you how it works and is a really nifty neat thing to dig into. So there's no real warning warning for today's class other than you may have to pull out your credit card. Now the nice thing about the GPIO0 library is that the documentation for the GPIO0 library, I have to say, is freaking awesome. It's freaking awesome. Having spent the past year mucking around in the Arduino world, having to do, do a bunch of research and jump between a lot of different websites to figure out how to do anything, it is just so nice to go to the GPIO0 uh, documentation and be like, oh, Okay, that's how you, that's how you do it. There's there's the code. There's the diagrams. There's everything I need in one nice little uh, piece of documentation right there. So the one thing that I'll say is the documentation for the GPIO zero, GPIO zero library is very good. But one of the issues that you're going to run into is that if you want to actually be able to use sensors, if you want to be able to trigger servos or LEDs, you are going to have to purchase uh, all of these little uh, widgets. Uh, again, you're going to need breadboards. You're going to need uh, resistors, you're probably going to need capacitors, anything that you're going to be building physically uh, that are going to connect to the GPIO pins, you're frankly going to need uh, the hardware to actually be able to build that out. I would recommend you take a look at the different packages on Amazon. So Amazon uh, has many different packages where you can buy for anywhere between, let's say, $20 to $100. These packages of sensors, these packages of breadboards and wires and resistors and capacitors and all that kind of stuff. Instead of trying to buy buy all of this equipment individually, I would recommend you go to Amazon, you find some package probably for about 40 or $50 that has a whole bunch of different sensors, a whole bunch of different LEDs, some resistors, some capacitors, the whole nine yards, and just buy that to start with. So that's really the only warning warning here. I mean, it's just, if you wanna connect sensors to your Raspberry Pi, you're gonna need sensors. And on top of those sensors, you will also need the breadboard, you'll probably need some resistors, you might need a capacitor or two. So if you simply buy a package off of Amazon, that would be the probably be the best way to go. So anyways, with that, let's go over to the demonstration computer. I'll just show you the documentation uh, for the GPIO0 library. Then I will show you a physical build out that I've done, uh, basically connecting a motion sensor and an LED to my Raspberry Pi. And then I will show you the code to show you how easy it is to build these projects. 
projects, and I think you will be shocked about how easy it is uh, to use the Raspberry Pi uh, to be able to connect sensors and to be able to communicate with output devices. So here we are at my demonstration computer, and I've brought up the GPIO0 package uh, documentation. So you can simply do a Google search for the GPIO0 package, and you should be able to pull this up, and you get all of your documentation here. Now, the first thing to realize is if that you are using the Raspberry Pi OS, GPIO0 is already installed. It comes pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi OS, so you can simply call to it in your Python script. If you're using a different flavor of Linux, though, let's say you're using Ubuntu, Ubuntu or one of the other flavors of Linux that you can install uh, onto your Raspberry Pi, you may have to actually install the GPIO0 library. Uh, and when you do that, you'll be able to access the GPIO0 pins. So that's the big thing to realize here is you can use different flavors of Linux. You can use different operating systems and be able to control those GPIO pins, but you will have to install the GPIO0 package in order to do that. Uh, past that, we can go down. We can see there's a lot of uh, different sections here. The first section we can take a look at is the basic recipes section. So with this basic recipe section, you can scroll through and you can see for a lot of the basic projects that you're going to be dealing with, they have sections here. So if you want to control an LED, an LED with variable brightness, a button, if you want a shutdown button, if you want to uh, come down here, deal with a servo or deal, deal with motors, deal with a distance sensor, deal with a motion sensor. The cool part here is you can simply click on whatever you're interested in. They will give you a full-fledged diagram of how you are going to connect that sensor up how you're going to connect the LED and the breadboard, all that type of thing. And then it gives you the full code here so that you can actually finish the project. Again, I cannot say enough. Whoever did the documentation for the GPIO0 library, they, could, they should get an award. <laughs> If you've been in the technology world for any amount of time, you know how horrible documentation normally is. I have no idea why this documentation is so good, but it is. It is really, really, really good. You can just, you know, click on whatever you want to do. They give you the documentation on how to uh, to actually wire everything up. They give you the code and away you go. Now, the first thing that you are going to need to take a look at, though, is the pin numbering. This is my only quibble with Raspberry Pi. To be clear, I love the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is just a phenomenal little device. The one thing I don't understand is the GPIO numbering scheme. So we got a 40 GPIO pins here, and logically, it's just a mess. So we can see GPIO pin number one is 3.3 volt power, number two is five volt, then it goes to the SDA and the SCL over here, then we go to GPIO pin four on physical pin seven, then on pin nine, it's ground, then we go to GPIO 17, 27, and 22, then we go to 3.3 volt, then we do GPIO 10, 9, 11, then ground. And so one of the things you can notice is just looking at this, is is trying to figure out what pin you're supposed to be connected to you really do need this wiring diagram so that you can verify you're connecting to the right pin i think that's what the only real big problem the only downside i see with the raspberry pi is especially when you have 40 pins like this and then how they've they've actually marked out these different pins it can be very confusing on what pin you're supposed to be connected to i will say from a troubleshooting process if you write your code if you do everything it seems Seems like your project should work, but for some reason it's not. I, I would put a $5 bet you most likely connected to the wrong pin. Because basically when you're sitting there and actually looking at the Raspberry Pi board and trying to figure out what pin you're supposed to be connected to, uh, you may need some reading glasses. You may need to verify that you've connected it to the appropriate pin. But basically this is the, the Raspberry Pi documentation here and you can come through and you can take a look. Uh, so we have a little LED. So this is their little LED project. So basically you're able to connect to ground, you're connect, able to connect to LED pins. So basically the pin 17, you have the 220 ohm resistor. So again, this is where you're going to need things like resistors and all those little additional electronic parts here. And so with here, basically what it says is from the GPIO zero library, import LED. So this allows you to control the LED from the time, uh, import sleep, and then we're going to say red. So basically we're going to have the LED. Red is going to equal LED 17. And then so this is going to loop. So while true, red, so this is going to be on, then it's going to sleep, then it's going to be off, and then it's just going to continue to loop through. So that's how this particular project works. If we go down here to LED with variable brightness, again, from GPIO zero, import PWM LED from time import sleep. 
then again, this is simply, this is how you would code. And what this does is it turns the LED on to different brightnesses, basically kind of like allows you to dim the LED. Um, and then like I say, past that, you can just go down, you can figure out what it is that you want to connect and it gives you the code and how to connect uh, what you're trying to connect to your Raspberry Pi. So this is the basic documentation of the Raspberry Pi. Let's go over and actually look at a project that I've created. Then we'll go and take a look at the code for that project. And I think you, you'll, you'll see how easy this library is uh, to actually be able to use the GPIO pins. So here's a project that I've created as a demonstration for today. Basically what I have here is I have a PIR sensor. So this is a passive infrared sensor, basically just a motion sensor. And I have an LED connected to the Raspberry Pi. So what happens here is if the uh, PIR sensor detects motion, the LED turns on. When it stops detecting motion, it turns off. And so basically you can use this as, you know, a simple type of alarm system. Now, if you take a look at how this is actually wired up, you can see basically the PIR sensor here so we have the PIR sensor with a PIR this takes in 5 volt it has a ground and then it has a sensor and so we've connected to 5 volt here we've connected to a uh, ground here and we've connected to the sensor so this up here is the wiring for this particular PIR sensor then down here this is where we have the LED and so for the LED we have this connected to pin uh, I think it's pin uh, 16 so this is LED pin 16 so when the motion is detected it turns turns on the power to pin 16 and then we have the ground coming to here and so basically this is what a physical project would look like so depending on how many sensors you have connected how many you know LEDs or whatever other kind of output devices you would add those on but this is basically what the physical device looks like and again it kind of shows you how it works so with that let's go over and take a look at the code on the Raspberry Pi so here we are at the Raspberry Pi desktop. All we need to do is we need to go up to the little start button. We need to click on programming and go to the Python or the Thony Python IDE. When we click on this, this will open up the IDE. And the last thing that I was working on was the PIR test.py script. And so this script is what allows us to read from the motion sensor and then turn the LED on if there's motion detected. Uh, if for some reason uh, this doesn't show up, so let's say you're working on a Python on script and it doesn't show up you can click on the open button here and when you click on the open button then you can go and you can basically open up whatever python script you want to deal with uh, so we take a look at this python script again it's very easy and i just have to say i just love the gpio zero library it just makes it makes life so easy so we're just simply going to say you know from gpio zero uh, we're going to import for the motion sensor and the LED. So this means our project will understand what to do with a motion sensor and an LED. We're also going to, from a signal, so in, uh, signal is a built-in package, we're going to import the ability to pause. And so this pause isn't like a delay. So like in the, uh, the Arduino world, you have a delay. This pause is actually more of a coding thing uh, for, the, for the resources to kind of be reset. And so basically once, once it goes through, once it, once it looks for the state of the motion sensor, then it kind of resets itself uh, but we need that and then what we're going to do here is we're going to create a variable uh, so we're going to create the variable PIR and it is going to equal motion sensor so this is what we've, we've grabbed uh, from the GPIO zero library. So it's gonna be a motion sensor. And so motion sensor is connected to GPIO pin four. So you could simply modify this to a different GPIO pin, um, as long as it's you know not a ground or, or not a five volt or whatever else. So whatever GPIO pin you can connect that to. And then we're going to create a variable for, L for the LED. So LED is simply going to equal LED at GPIO pin 16. Then we're gonna come down here and simply what we have is PIR. So when the variable PIR, when underscore motion, so basically when it detects motion, the LED is going to be turned on. PIR, when no motion, LED is going to be turned off. And so this is literally all that's required uh, in order to turn the LED on or and turn it off when it does or did not, does not detect motion. Now the important thing to remember whenever you write out this Python script, is once you're done, make sure you click the run button. Make sure you click the run button. So if the run button, if the script is not actually running, then it's not actually running, right? So if we go over and do a little picture in picture here, we can see that right now, right now it's not running. The script is not running. And I can sit here and, and I can mess with the motion sensor and the LED light is not turning on. 
The reason is, is because the script is not running. As soon as I start running the script, now the script is running, and now, now you see when it detects motion, come on. When it detects motion, now it's actually turning on. So I think that's going to be the big thing, especially for new people, is you're gonna go through, you're gonna hardwire everything, you're gonna write all the code, and then you're going to simply forget to click on that run button and your project won't work. But basically, this is just an introduction to the GPIO Zero library. Again, it is amazing how, how easy it is to actually make these little projects work. The documentation is incredibly good. So it's definitely something you should go and start playing with. So now you've had a brief introduction to the GPIO Zero library, and really, as I say, the documentation is so good, I honestly think you just need to go out there, you need to grab some hardware, you need to start building a few of these small projects, uh, seeing how it all works, and go from there. This is not like the Arduino world. So the Arduino world, I had to do a lot of different classes about a lot of different sensors and a lot of different ways to do things, and the reason was is because in the Arduino world, it's like you have to reinvent the wheel every time you're about to do a project or maybe not even reinvent the wheel you have to kind of like reinvent the concept of a circle whenever you want to do the project again if you need time if you need storage all of these very simple things you don't think about in a computing environment when you're dealing with an Arduino all of a sudden not only do you have to think about them but you actually have to solve those problems how are you going to be getting time how are you going to be dealing with storage how are you going to be dealing with X Y or Z and that takes a lot of time and effort and energy to figure out how you're going to solve those problems. The nice part about the Raspberry Pi is you have a full-fledged computer. So if you need to deal with time, you can just grab the time from, from the, the clock on the Raspberry Pi. If you need to deal with storage, you can simply store directly to the Raspberry Pi. So many things that you have to build uh, basically from scratch in the Arduino world with the Raspberry Pi, it's already there. And then you're simply connecting your input and your output devices to those GPIO pins to add on you know, additional uh, usability for whatever your projects are. So go out there, take a look at the GPIO Zero library, start playing around with it. Uh, we are going to be doing a number of uh, projects with the GPIO Zero library going into the future, and it is just a really cool thing to play around with. Again, if you're trying to figure out how to get like a selection of sensors and wires and, and you know, breadboards and that type of thing, I really would say just simply go to Amazon.com. They've got little packages anywhere from $20 to $100 with all kinds of selections of sensors and, and breadboards and, and uh, resistors and LEDs and all that type of thing, go and spend a little bit of money on one of those packages and that should give you most of what you need. That's really going to be the only hang up here. Again, making sure you have a 220 ohm resistor or making sure you have the right uh, wiring and that kind of thing. But if you buy a package, eh, you should be fine with it. So anyways, uh, as always, I enjoy teaching this class. Look forward to seeing you at the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.